Hello, my name is Dan Kweku Yaboa, Head of Sports, Despite Media. Subscribe to my YouTube page, Dan Kweku Yaboa TV. Remember to turn on the notification button and be part of the DKY family. Thank you. Okay, um, I've been for a try a year. We've gotten um, the latest winner in the WBO, WBC, featherweight division, former world champion. Isaac, the Royal Storm, do we? We are in Ghana's win, guys. Jump, Charlie, how are you? Oh, bad um, so I want us to do an informal interview. Okay. It's informal because nothing is scripted. It is. It will just come. Yes, sir. Um, first of all, Ghanaians had the opportunity to watch you against uh, Gonzalez. It was a split decision. A very difficult opponent. What's your impression about the bout? You know, BBA was say they say they can and pass the man you come here because I know now Omar BBA go see senior Yeshua. Nti as Daniel the man you me say we know so your friend no know what say yanka and now Omar um Kundiye. So um and uh, in regards to the fight, in regards to the fight, it was um challenging, but. It just is. It is at that level, you know. So every fight is supposed to have some level of um, challenges or some level of um, restriction, you know, before you before you surpass that stage. Um, I mean, you know, and I'm always and will forever be grateful. Um, you know. So right now we are back in the mix, you know. We are back. We are back in the mix, which is the most important thing. And I thank God for that. So after what 2018, 19, 20, 21, 22, um, almost four years. Almost four years. Um, I thank God. You know that the rise, the rise has been steady, steady, very, very steady. So, okay. so those of those of you watching us. Um, this is uh, Maryland. This is not in Ghana. This is Maryland. A different venue altogether. Hey. And I'm privileged to be with the champ. Um, coincidentally, uh, I was the only Ghanaian journalist to have followed the champ to Philadelphia when he won his um, world title against Magdaleno. And a pleasant coincidence in, in, in Minnesota too. I was there. He's, he's the one contender now, right now. So we're expecting another world title a few months to come. Champ, those of us who are not into boxing think that after a fight you need to go to the hospital, you need to be bedridden, uh, you have to be massaged, given injections. Tell us about it. You know, um, you made you made mention of something which I really want to um, uh, say a little bit about. It. You know, it just goes to show that Isaac Dogbe and. UTV and Peace FM, or if we should say, this, um, despite media, despite, despite media, has been has been has been part of you know my progress, um, you know, from the beginning, and I'm very very grateful for that, um, you know. So I would like to say thank you, thank you, you know, um, to you, and you extend my my my, my appreciation. The rest of your team and your and your media house, because they've been part of, 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 of Isaac Dobby, the rise, you know, the rise, the fall, the climb, you know, the rebuilding, everything. So it's been, they, they've been really, really great, and um, I really appreciate it, you know, because each fight, they, I, you know, I look, I look back at the fights I've had since my losses. Um, I look at the first one, you know. Um, um, how do you call it? Uh, this guy. Um, well, my first combat fight. What's his name? See? It wasn't Lopez, but anyway, the second one was Lopez. You know, okay, so from the Lopez fight, you know, there was a different version of me. And then he came to Diaz, Christopher Diaz. Another different version of me. You can see there are different performances, but there are similarities. A different performance as well. When it comes to Gonzalez, you can see also similarities and difference as well in that as well. So I believe that as we are getting there to that level again, 
you know the levels are changing I believe that this fight is really an indication of where I am supposed to be I belong, I belong with their needs I was in Minnesota when we were fighting Gonzalez and the Ghanaian fans, the handful of Ghanaian fans there were shouting, Neho, Neho. Yes, I have my Neho cap here. <laughs> what is the meaning of Neho? I spoke to one Francis Dark and he said Neho means be ready to fly. I don't know if that is the case. No, no. My family, my loved ones, all the media personnel that, um, you know, that pushed the fight and everything else, you know, my sponsors. Uh, Nish Coco, Ghana, um, you know, Nala, and all the all the all the great people, you know, that have been part of the team, the immediate people and also the new people, you know. After every fight, we gain new fans, new people, you know, as we're going along. So I really appreciate it to everybody that is, is part of the journey. Okay, I was saying that. Um a lot of people or the connoisseurs have beautified the game of boxing, the noble art, art of self-defense, um, blah, blah, blah. Sweet but science. to those of us watching, it is a dangerous sport. And people have the notion that uh, post bout to go through a lot of processes, get injection, get massage. But tell us about it. Um, I mean, uh, straight after the fight, the first thing that you do um, is the, um, um, the state state commission you do a, a test a drug test okay. you know just to make sure that none of the athletes were you know taking any illegal substances and stuff like that after that i mean you go home oh, okay you know you go home the rest is up to you oh. you have a, 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 a period of time um for 30 days you know if nothing happens to you then you're good <laughs> okay. should, should you should, 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 should you um should you incur any serious injuries or whatever, then you know you have to see your doctor and stuff like that. But I'm always grateful. I thank God that every time I come out for a fight, I'm clean, fit. fat, and um, you know, only thing that may have is probably just body sores. You know, just um, so it's, so it's much. Normal, yeah. it's, it's, it's normal. And um, you know, and that one, you know, I have my family, to, my family to, to help me through, 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 through that period. I'll come back to um, the processes post fight and the recent bout. The first time I met you, if you remember, I asked you that why do you want to go into boxing? A nice young guy. Jump. I'll go back to the recent fight and how you um, were able to get victory and, and make us happy as Ghanaians. But if you remember, the first time I met you, I asked you that you are too nice looking to be a boxer. Why did you decide to take up? boxing as a profession you know um, sometimes one cannot uh, one cannot neglect or run away from their purpose you know I believe that I believe that God put me in this position you know and with that being said he brought the right people to guide me through it and I really appreciate it everybody that has worked so hard in the past to get me to this position um honestly sometimes i don't know myself <laughs> i cannot lie to you okay. uh, but as you're going along you know you start to feel that oh look whenever I, I get into the ring i bring so much joy to so many people i bring you know so much to so many people and um, it's something that you know, everybody has their way that they have to do. You are unique in your own way. I'm unique in my own way. The next one is unique in their own way. And God has gifted everybody accordingly. You know, so what one can do, gifted everybody accordingly. You know, so what one can do, stay stay in your lane. Do your your best and use your use your gift. You know, to the glory of the of the Lord and to serve the people. And I believe that's what I am doing right now. Um, when I fight, people come together, and it makes me happy. And people are happy. I'm sure God is also happy. How how come uh, you entered into boxing? Did you school in Ghana and got exposure at Bukom, or how how did you get there? 
my boxing career, my bo the whole boxing um, started, well, boxing for me started from the UK. Okay. You know, uh, United Kingdom. Um, that was when everything started for me. And uh, it's, it just picked up from there. You, know? you were born in the UK? I was born in Ghana. In Ghana, yeah. You grew up in Ghana? I grew, up, grew, up, I grew, up, I grew up in Ghana for. So my teenage years. Oh, okay. So my, so my but it never occurred to you to be a boxer while I was in Ghana? No. no really? no. Where, where did you school in Ghana? Um, well, I lived in Kumasi with my grandparents. And then, uh, and then uh, I went to Amazing Grace. Okay. In Kumasi? Yeah, in Kumasi. Uh, in Kote de Okay. And then when I came to Accra, I think I went to that Okay, that's what that's that's you mentioned. Yeah, in that song. Okay. Um, I think I may have been like, but like, I don't know. Um, uh, in Kote de Diapo. Okay. And then when I came to Accra, I think I went to that. Okay, that was like, Yeah, in that song. Okay. Um, I think I may have been like, but like, I don't know. Um, yeah. Okay, so you left that to the UK at yeah. that tender age? I left, I left, yeah, I left, I left that to the to St. Monica, which was around our area. Okay. Because I, I, was, I, was in, I was in Accra for like a year or two. Uh, probably a year, you know, and, then, and after that, I left to the UK. With all the schools you mentioned, somebody would say, then you had to be in a local palace. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know any, anything about that. I leave, I leave this as well. Okay, so tell us um, from Ghana how life started for you in the UK. Um, I mean, now uh, you know, God being so great, I went to the UK, uh, I lived with my parents, and then um, you know, I started, I started secondary school, you know, and then I think within that same year. I started boxing. Really? Yeah. What happened? You, you went to a, a gym and no, 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 got no. attracted? No, it was, I mean, it was uh, my father that got me into Yeah, my father got me into boxing and, um, you know, it just kind of picked up from there. You know, he started, he started training me, teaching me. No, I, want, I want to know specifically what started, like the, the first day where you had the opportunity to wear gloves and you how know, you felt. Okay. So it was. He said it. I didn't want to do boxing. Okay. He told me I didn't want to do boxing. <laughs> you know that was that 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 is the truth. Okay. Boxing wasn't something I wanted to do. Okay. But he asked you to do it. He said to me, I said no. I won't do it. So <laughs> later when it became like. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I like you when you did it. No, it wasn't even that. It became like a mind game. Okay. You know. I'm a boy. I'm a boisterous boy. Yeah, I was a boisterous boy. You know, you always try to like, you know. So psychologically, I think he did me psychologically. Okay. You know, it's more or less like, ah, uh, oh, you're not strong. Ah, <laughs> uh, you're afraid that you're going to okay, okay, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, so it was said, a mind game. Yeah, it was a mind game, and then he said something. You know, when he said that. I don't know. It triggered it. It triggered something <laughs> in, my, in, my, in, my, in my mind. And, and the following morning, I got up and I said to him, I will do it. And I proved to you that I'm not scared. Yeah. You know, but what, what he said, one day I'll tell you. Really? So yeah. did he t take you to the gym after you told no, him no, that no, you ready? No, he told me if that's the case, I should go and run around the park. Really? And I think at the time, it was really cold. You know, winter was coming. So okay. it was really, really cold. So I went to run around the pack uh, at the park. Uh, I think about what, five or ten times between. Yeah. Okay. And um, you know, I came back. My hands were freezing. <laughs> so cold. Like, you know. Did you get angry at him? That look no, at I, what I, you've I, caused. I wasn't, I wasn't even angry. Okay. I came back. I'm like, I told you I can do it. Really? Yeah. Okay, yeah. You, you, wanted, you wanted to prove me wrong. Like, okay. So then it just everything just started from there. They're teaching me how to throw my hand, how to stand properly. Is he know. a boxer himself? Um, no, no. Do you have any boxer in your family? No. Yeah, I'm the first and original. Wow. <laughs> so, no coffee. How, coffee. How did he learn his techniques on the internet? Um, well, <laughs> he, he he had friends and, uh, okay. when he was growing up in Mbukobo. Okay. Well, when he was growing up in Ghana. So, 
I believe that's how he, he had a bit of technique. He had, he had, he had the knowledge of it, you know. So, um, but the people that he was hanging around with and stuff like that, and that eventually, you know, also started like being you know, and everything else, and he formed and created his own thing. And you know, that's what makes it. We didn't have no blueprint to follow. I yeah. don't know no blueprint yeah. to follow. Yeah. You know, from what he learned, what he knew, he taught it to me, and then, you know, that was it. Wow. Yeah. Tell us, how did you combine education and, and boxing as an amateur? Ah, uh, you know what? Sometimes, sometimes, I would say that, hey, I haven't had a child for you. Um, but I don't regret it. I don't regret not having a childhood. I don't regret not having to go to the to the raves, you know, being at the party, you know, stuff like that. I don't regret not having to hang out with my friends and stuff like that. I don't regret none of those things. Um, I don't regret it, none of those things. Um, in fact, I'm actually, I'm grateful to God and I'm thankful to God as well because I believe that all of my experiences have shaped me to the person that I am today, you know. Um, so, your experiences is what carries you through to life, you know. But the most important thing is, as you're going along, you have to be willing to make some changes fine tune certain things and um yeah that was it you know it's more or less it was always like i wake up early morning i don't i train i go to school i come back i train i do my homework okay i go to sleep i wake up train you know school sleep homework in the cyclic car yeah. order yeah. okay yeah Are you an Olympian? Yes, I, w I was. Tell us know, about it. How, how God it being happen? so great. Three years of me starting boxing, I went to Olympic Games. Ooh. You know, three Whoa. years of me in boxing. That was brilliant. Olympic Games. Um, before getting to the Olympic Games, I think I had won about, I think, two national tournaments. Okay. Or I had, um, I had been in three national tournaments and won two. Okay, before the national tournament and the Olympic Games, who was your first boxing opponent and how was the feeling like? Um, <laughs> Did he beat you or you beat him? My, well, my first amateur fight? Yeah. My first amateur fight? Oh my goodness, who is this guy? <laughs> um, he might be a British, huh? Yeah, it was in the UK, it was okay. uh, this guy. I forgot the guy's name, okay. but I think the guy's name is Yusuf. Yusuf something. Okay. Right? I think he's an African, right? No, no, no. I think he's. Uh, um, I think he was. Um, I think he. he uh, Are you beat him? No, I think he was um, Afghanistan, or Afghanistan or something. Um, I, I think that's where he was from. Did he beat you or you beat him? He beat me. Really? That was a close fight. So he won. <laughs> and he, he had he had more. Experience. Were you discouraged after the, the he, first? And had, you, were, you had, were defeated. He had more experience okay. and everything else, but that's besides the point. But what happened was he beat me and we fought in the in an army barrack. Oh okay. It was a dinner show. Okay. So I um we came on like wow, this, this is very different from, <laughs> from the usual training. From the usual You've been training. Having you know? back here. Yeah, from the gym. <laughs> you know, um so we got we got we got to the place. And I've seen all these military people like strong nicely, guys, nicely dressed, yeah. like looking sharp in the light, but then inside the drink seems mm -hmm. so dark. <laughs> 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 there's light, there's light everywhere, but in the ring, except the ring, except the arena. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is me walking into the ring. I walked into the ring like, oof, I'm looking around, I'm like, keeping a straight face. Were, were you point. afraid? Was, I was scared. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I won't lie to you. I'm gonna listen. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah, I, was, I was petrified. <laughs> I'm petrified. <laughs> so, you know, what was your daddy I'm telling you at the time? 
Oh, yeah. I see. He was encouraging you, you beat him. Oh, he was, but I see, um, I had joined a gym. Okay. So the coach you were, were under, taking me okay. yeah, into the gym. So he was, you know, I had joined the gym. So okay. now the coaches were the ones that were taking me into the, into the ring. Okay. You know, to fight. And I think, um, yeah. So, as I said, I had been training for a while and no fights were coming. So we're like, oh, I'm all kind of like yeah. giving them pressure. Oh, what am I going to do? And the DD was there. And then... You know, lo and behold, one night we received a call. I was during yeah, we received a call. Uh, Isaac, you're fine in a week, <laughs> in a week time. And um, yeah, they, they, you know, said okay. They gave us a wait so that the prisoner was going to fight. We tried to show the brothering up on YouTube. We didn't get it. Yeah, they didn't know nothing. And uh, said, oh, the prison's quite experienced. Hard to do and so fight, but it's okay. It was heavier than me. So, uh, yeah, no problem. It's fine. My father went to pick a fight for me. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's fine, it's fine. No, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's fine. You know, so we took it and we're going to the ring. It was a tough fight. It was it uh, a 10 round bout? No, no, no. Uh, I'm actually three minutes. So oh, okay. That was three rounds. Okay. Uh, the three rounds. Um, One minute per round. No, I think it was like two and a half minutes. Okay. Yeah, two and a half minutes first. I was a novice, so I was like a youth. You know, I'm not at the time, but I was, I was, I was I mean like 15. Okay. You know, so we're now, you know, getting to the grieving. Round one, boxing skills. So it's more or less like, I just want to fight. You know, because I had that, I had that thing yeah, yeah, where yeah. you hit me, I'm gonna come, yeah, I'm gonna come. Come at you. You know, so I, I've always had that thing where, you know, I just, I just go in and fight. Yeah, okay. You know, I had skills, something every now and then. I showed yeah. the skills and everything. Yeah. Then we fought, we fought, we fought. And the owner of the gym, after after I lost the fight, but when we were fighting, the whole crowd was in there. Right. Pound for pound. The whole crowd was in there. The military people, everybody, like, people at the dinner show, you know, they are eating and drinking and doing whatever. And like, come on, son, you can get it. Come on, I say, yeah, son. Yeah, that's it, son. Oh yeah. Oh, you know, like every, yeah, every punch that yeah. connects from both, yeah. from each yeah. of us, you know, the yeah. crowd were, were, were reacting. <laughs> but listen, it was fun. It was fun. I don't know, it was fun. Like, okay. you know, so, so was it fight, like um, a knockdown, a knockout? Oh, no, you know, no, 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 and um, after the fight, the man that owned that that, that owned the gym, he was called Mick, Mick Carney, you know, bless us, bless, bless, bless. <laughs> Do you want to retire? <laughs> <laughs> after the first bout, do you want to retire? <laughs> after the first bout, so you want to retire now? And I said, no. You know, listen, I lost that fight and I cried. Really? I was crying. Oh. Everybody tried to encourage me. Console you. Don't worry. Even Muhammad Ali lost. Even Shigaru Lenin lost. Listen, look at me when he lost at the Olympic Games. Lost his fight. Don't worry, Jones. You lost his fight. Don't worry about that. It's fine. You're gonna come back to me. Yeah. And me, I didn't want to hear. You know. I was just crying. I was, I was, I was crying. After that, I was like really crying. And um, you know, so after we went home and that was, we went home and um, yeah, that was it. So later on, um, you know, I had a fight again. My second fight, I stopped the guy. Wow. My third fight, I stopped the guy. Whoa. And then my fourth fight, they put me into the into a tournament. Ooh. And I won a tournament. Hey. Yeah. So now I was back. Yeah. I was back yeah. for blood. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was back for blood. And um, I, they put me into another. So from that point on, I lost again. I lost um, after the tournament. I mean, I lost to a guy. I was one of the shows and stuff and then later on I wasn't really getting fights as much because I kept on stopping all, all my yeah, opponents and stuff so all the other clubs they didn't want me like fighting their boys and stuff like that and um, so the only times that I got fights 
were in a tournament and even that sometimes I'll be in a tournament and like they'll pull their boys out of the tournament Whoa. so automatically we push them on to the next day yeah so gradually and gradually um, I won uh, my second my second tournament which was a senior novices and um, you know um, and then everything just really started so at what point um, did you get the opportunity to be at the Olympics? At the Olympic Games, I think it was around uh, 2012, and I was fresh in college. And I think a year before that, um, my father uh, approached the, the Ghana team and asked them that they would, they would like me to be a justified youth They said no, I was too young. I was only 17 by that time, and, and um, you know, you was like, oh, uh, like, oh, it's too young. Oh, this boy. Oh, it's too young. Don't beat him. Don't kill him. We're intimidating him. Yeah. So, in the way to um, Baku. Yeah, uh, Azerbaijan. No, no, no. They went to ah, Baku. Baku. Yeah, yeah Azerbaijan. Baku. Yeah, yeah, for the World Game, yeah, World yeah. Championships. Yeah. And they beat all of them. <laughs> so now, when they came back again, now the man came to approach my father. Okay. I said, okay, now we want to give us a try. Okay. So he called me and my cousin, Joshua Boche, and a friend of ours, um, Leron Richards. Uh, and yeah, three of us crossed the corner to do this fight. That means so great. You know, the politics was really high. Because, you know, there was a lot of media, everything, you know, neg negativity around me. You know. Why do you have to go and bring the people from the UK? What about the boys here? Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And we're like, look, all we want is a chance. You know? To prove all ourselves. we want is a chance to prove ourselves. You guys are part of the Trinity. But yeah, this works. You know? To, to, I just, I was fresh in college. And I think a year before that, um, my father uh, approached the, the Ghana team and asked them that they would be like me to be a justified education. They said no, I was too young. I was only 17 by that time and, and um, you know, you know like, oh, uh, they were like, oh, they were like, oh, it's too young. Oh, this boy, oh, it's too young. No, we team, no, killing. No, no, no. We're intimidating you. Know, yeah, so, in the way to um, Baku, yeah, uh, Azerbaijan. No, 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 they were to ah, Baku. Baku. Yeah, yeah, Azerbaijan, Baku. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the World Game, yeah, the World Championships. Yeah. And they beat all of them. <laughs> So now when they came back again, now the man came to approach my father okay. and said, okay, now we want to give us a try. Okay. So he called me and my cousin, Joshua Boshe, and a friend of ours, um, Leron Richards. Uh, and yeah, three of us crossed the corner to give me just by the way. It was so great. You know, the politics was really hard because you know, there was a lot of media, everything, you know, neg negativity around me. Uh, why do you have to go and bring the people from the UK? What about the boys here? Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and we're like, look, all we want is a chance. Yeah. You know? To prove all ourselves. we want is a chance to prove ourselves. You guys are part of the Trinity. But yeah, this works. You know? Yeah. To... All we want is a chance to prove ourselves. But I guess everybody's fighting for their own, so that really didn't matter. Um, but eventually, um, I got being so great, you know, they took me on my first international outing and uh, I went to Morocco for the Justify Inclusion and, you know, after all the frustrations and everything and everything else in it, within, within the team, um, you know, I qualified and I was only about to qualify with a silver medal for the Olympic Games. Well, unfortunately, I did not win a medal for Ghana at the Olympic Games. And afterwards, I, got, I, went, I came back, I went back to England and um, I went back into the amateurs. How, how helpful was the Olympic Games experience? Honestly speaking, looking back, I wish I had enjoyed it more. You know? And that was like one of the greatest moments sports history for every athlete at the, at the amateur level you know people were taking pictures people were making friends you know you know people were networking i didn't know anything i'm just a 17 year old my first you were time, in for business that's you know, it my first time 
on that stage, yeah. you know, on a big stage like that. And um, I didn't really have much experience, so I didn't, honestly, yeah. all I did was stay in my room when it was time for me to go and train, we'd go and work out, we'd come back, I'd be in my room. Yes, I would talk to my family, I told my family, and that was it. You know, so, yeah. Basically, I was more or less like a, you feel like a, like, like a ghost, I think, <laughs> you know, but like I said, I don't regret those things. Um, the only thing I would say for me that, you know, was later on in my career, I want to attempt, later on, I realized that, oh, you know, what? I really missed out, yeah. you know, I could have enjoyed, it's a mid -stage, yeah. you know, I could have enjoyed it and still worked, yeah. worked hard, you know, through it, but it didn't happen that way, and um, yeah, it was, I mean, you know, moments in every other life. Um, and after that, I turned, I went back to Amish's, um, into, into a tournament, I won it, and after that, it's turned pro. Oh, okay, so um, which bout was your first pro, pro bout? My first pro fight was in Switzerland okay. um, against a guy called Sabatop. Did you win? That? I won that fight, yeah. I won, I won, I won, all, I won, I won all my fights, you okay. know. My first pro fight, I won, I stopped the guy, um, and then you know, um, I think I two, I didn't fight for about a year. Yeah, about a year, and then um, I had a fight in Belfast with Carl Frampton's, you know, promotional company, you know, and things, and uh, yeah, that was it. And everything just picked up from there because it's been so great. But all those times, I was still in, I was still in college. So as soon as I finished my college, um, you know, my college course, and then my, you know, I was, you know, I'm going to tell you this. I, I enrolled in a uni in university, really? University of Brighampton, okay. you know, in the UK. I was in uni for three weeks, three weeks, and then my management were like, you know what? Now you finish college, we want you to be in America. Whoa! So, so you know, they asked you to stop schooling. We're okay. gonna move to America. Whoa! And as as time goes on, we're gonna see how. Which gonna, which course uh, did you register for? I was doing sports and exercise science. Oh, okay, so did, it was did, in line yeah, with. I did that in, uh, in in college, so now I was going to expand on it more in uni. You know, sports uh, sports sports science and everything. Okay, you know, uh, as well. But, um, yeah. But did you did you regret um, getting there? And within two three weeks, we asked to stop. Well, the only regret is that I still have to pay the cost fees because there's no refund. <laughs> there's no uh, refund. Okay, anyway. Okay. So, um, that, that, that was that, that was the okay. only that was the only downside. Okay. Outside that, that's it. <laughs> we moved to America, you know, with my new management. I'll tell another story, something crazy that happened. Okay. You know, I had my debut in America. Uh, I fought this guy. Um, I forgot his name. Uh, I don't need to check that. Is he an American? Yeah, I think he was a Mexican. Okay. Mexican, yeah. You know, my first fight, the guy came out, you know, looking, trying to intimidate me. He had the beard, he had the beard, right? beard. Long one, right? He had flattered it. Right? Okay. You know, looking like, he looking mean. I'm like, <laughs> okay. But I see, with me, when people look at me in a certain way, it gives me that sort of impression. It, it tells, it gives me a lot of information about you. Okay. You know, so, by the way you look at me, is how I'm going to react to you. So, I mean, we're going to the fight and I, I, I stopped him. Really? You know, I stopped him as well. And, you know, everything <laughs> Which was, round was that? Um, I think it was probably like four rounds. Whoa. Like four rounds. Whoa. Yeah, I feel like I call the fourth round, and that's how that's 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 where you know that's how I was, and you know progressively, I had a, another fight. You know, the next fight was quite tough. You know, um, that my my three fights I had in the, in the states were really tough. I mean, like for someone else because the people were heavier, okay. experienced, and you know. Um, yeah, so it was a little bit challenging, but it was good. It was good for me um, because, hey, 
you become making America can make it anywhere. Sure, sure. You know, and uh, God being so great, you know, um, or dur during all that period, we came to Ghana and we started praying from Ghana. So, um, your world title fight against Magdaleno, um, what, what, what was it like in terms of numbers? Which, was it the 20th fight? Was it the 30th fight? Um, fight? Hmm. Magdaleno fight, I think, must have been probably, probably 18. Okay. I believe. And when you got the news that you were going to you've been given the opportunity to fight for a world title, how was the feeling? It was great. Look, listen. What happened initially? I was I was a featherweight. When the opportunity came, I dropped down with to Super Bantamweight. And then we had to go to New Zealand to fight. So when we went there to fight, you know, God being so great, we won. Uh, we beat the Latino champion and you know, we came to Ghana again and and then it's the key to happy. Um, after Javier Shakran, no, after Aristotle, yeah, yeah, I think that was it. Yeah, after that one, I think we defended it like twice, and then we fought the, we got into a position, you know, went to, I went to the WBO for the convention, and then I'm um, lobbied for the fight to fight for the champion. Because at the time, the tournament had been inactive. Okay. The title was there, nothing was happening. Number one contender two was there. So they said, okay. Number one, con the champion was out because he was injured. Okay. Apparently. So I said to them, well, if that's the thing, um, I think at the time I was like number three or number, I don't know, I think I was like number four. Okay. They did the rankings. So they, they came, they were coming down and said, okay, if that's the case, then a mandatory contender should fight the uh, number one, number two, and number three contenders. Mm -hmm. All of them said no. One. So we we said that well, if if these people ahead of me don't want to fight the number one contender, let me fight him. Okay. Then the winner can fight the champion when he's ready. Oh, okay. So God so, being so great, that's what happened. Okay. Then, yeah. So you won, you won that bout yeah, and then you got the fight that we brought to Ghana. Yeah, oh, okay, Warriors. I got it. The I got Warriors it. It was fight. a tough fight. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was just a, oh, it was okay. a good fight. Yeah. And it, was, it was one of the fights yeah. where that really propelled me, you know, um, up there. And yeah, it was really amazing. And, you know, uh, Against Magdaleno, mm -hmm. um, were you afraid first time world title shot? Um, you know, there are two things about being afraid. You know, fear can do two things to you. Okay. It can either keep you alive or it can either um, get you coiled up in your shell. You know, so when, you, when we speak of fear, you have to understand where... The, the type of fear we're talking about. The type of fear you're okay. talking about, you know. I'm a type of person... I don't shy away from fear or adversity. If something is ahead of me and I set my mind to it, you go I pray to God and I ask God, you know what, I am in your hands. I want to test it to see what, what's going to happen. You know, so it's more or less like, okay, it's like when you're a child, or, or let's say your children, right? You tell them, Nana, don't touch this. <laughs> And now we'll go around a uh, full 360, <laughs> right? Yes. And then we'll be staring at it, uh, and now we'll walk away. Uh -huh. And now we'll come back again. Yeah. Go around again, mm -hmm. but eventually at the end of the day, yeah. and now it's going to pass. Yeah. yeah, that's our kids. Fear has two things. You know, I have faith that God has given me everything. I can accomplish anything, you know. And even with the fear, I still go ahead, you know, where it is at, I want to see for myself. I can't depend on you to tell me that, oh, this person is strong, this person is scary, this person is this. But your level of strong, yeah. scary, might be, fear, from, might be different from mine, you know, so, nervousness, yes, you feel nervous. The fear of failure, it's your first time, your first time round. 
you know, you're anticipating, oh, am I going to make it? Am I going to win? Is he going to beat me? I was gonna, what, what was going to be the outcome? But I found God as something I don't think too much. When it comes to fighting, I don't think just keep on walking. And um, yeah, there was an element of, you know, like, wow, this guy is good. You know, he's good. But you know what? He's good, so I'm mad. In 2018, um, you threw the whole country into ecstasy. Um, Ghana had gotten another world champion. A few years later, you lost the title. Would you say you were unlucky? I wouldn't say I was unlucky, no. No, I'll never say that. If I say that, if I say that I'm not being truthful to myself, if I say that I'm not being grateful to God, I believe that God, um, God gives everything, you know, and everything is, 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 is in His hands. He can decide to do whatever He, he pleases. This, you can't argue with that, you know. All I can say is that you know what God was. All I can say is that. God was putting me through a phase, you know, he was teaching me, he was testing me, not just me, but everyone around me. He wanted me to see something, he wanted me to mature, he wanted me to grow, you know. Um, so I wouldn't say that, um, I, would, I wouldn't say that at all, you know. In fact, I actually appreciate everything I've been through. I, 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 I but were you disappointed? You feel disappointed, you, you know, because if you are, if you are a goal oriented person, you know, your whole life, all you ever know is boxing. You know, you don't have no other life anywhere. How you don't have no social life. It's just boxing. You know, you go to the gym, you train, you know, you win, everything, you fight. That's all you know. So yeah, you feel disappointed in some way. Especially when you're young, you feel disappointed because you're used to it. You're used to, you know what? You go out there, you get a job done. You go out there and you deliver. You go out there, you do what you need to do. You know, so after a while, when you don't get a decision, you feel like, oh, you know what, I've let myself down. All the people that are looking up to me, you know, I've let them down. Um, what's gonna happen? But as time goes on, you start to understand that, oh, you know what, hey, sometimes we are moving so fast, we just need to take a break. Okay, so um, I read a book that um, has a title, The Rise and Fall of Idi Amin. Okay. So yours is The Fall and Rise of Royal Storm <laughs> Dobe. Um, what should Kenyans look up to in the next three, four, five months ahead of us? Yeah, three, four, five months ahead of us. Honestly, my life is this season is in God's hands. I can't predict the future. And um, but I do believe that great, greater things are coming, are coming my way. Would you love to fight Navarrete again? Would I love to fight Navarrete again? Well, I am in position to fight him. You know, I have options now. Uncle Dad, you're not listening yeah. to me. Uncle Dad, Uncle Dad, listen to me. I have options now. Yeah. Uncle Dad. Mm -hmm. I've never shied away from a fight. Yeah. I've never shied away from anybody. And top rank will give good account. I'll be there, top rank will call me and be like, Isaac, this is the guy, what do you think of him? All I say to them, let's go. There's never, oh, I'm not too sure about this, no. But, but, but people, think that, people think that that is not the way to go. You need to pick and choose. You can pick and choose, but what are you trying to make a name for yourself? I trying to, you know, build something, solidify something. You know, you can make the numbers. Yeah, that's fine. People can go there. Whether you want to win, be outstanding, win or lose, you get paid anyway. Do you understand? Win or lose, you get paid anyway. Who knows? Anybody can go out there and, and, and place a bet on you and say, hey, my guy, listen, I'm putting big money on you, so lose this fight. Is that what you want? Nah. I want something more than that. So, this is all I've known all my fans life. Fans of Derby, Kenyans who are interested in boxing, um, we should hope that Derby will become a world champion again.
Yeah, so fans in Ghana, boxing followers should uh, have the hope that Dogbe will be a world champion again. Most definitely. Most definitely. And I say that because, yeah, because now I do believe that, no, I, not I now believe, but I do believe that God is about to open some greater doors that, you know, people are going to mount. But let me, let, let, I mean, like I was saying, look, the time is coming, you know, it was just, you know, me, me using that fight was just for me to take a pause, to take a break restructure and come back again you know to grow up to mature and you know it's been great you know i can't complain i praise god every day in my life there's been there's been times where i'm like oh you ask questions you ask yourself questions and everything else but essentially you will find the answers you know you will find the answers because i do really really the fullness that you have to find mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Okay, so that's what okay. It Try to so, pull through. Yes. Okay. You know, so okay. that's one thing I would say. The end starts for never so never failing. The E starts for excellence. The A is for hope. And the O is to overcome. You know. Oh, okay. so, yeah, so God has given us a never failing excellence. Okay. Like, to do hope. Okay. We shall overcome. Wow, that's 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 beautiful. To do hope, we shall overcome. That's beautiful. You you switched camp from um, Mr. for to another trainer. How helpful has that been? It's, it's been really helpful. Um, I mean, they didn't come to change things. They only came to impart more knowledge and also to add on top of what uh, that, that, or, or on top of what I knew before. And I'm grateful to them. You know, um, it, they've been really a great game changer. Uh, you know, I'm learning the sports. I'm learning the art of boxing. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying boxing again. You know, so they bring a different tune, different vibes all together, different flavor all together. How's the relationship with Mr. Podobo? He's my father. You are cool? He's my father, of course. I'm good, cool, my father. Yeah, cool. I'm good, cool, my father. I have nothing, you know, I have nothing against my father, so I love my father. Life goes on. Yeah, life goes on. The that you have to find. Oh, okay, you know, okay. Pull okay, so that's what okay, it is. try to so, pull through. Yes. Okay. You know, so okay. that's one thing I would say. The end starts for never so never failing. The E starts for excellence. The A is for hope. And the O is overcome. You know. Oh, okay. so, so God has given us a never failing excellence. Okay. That's like, true hope. Okay. We shall overcome. Wow, that's 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 beautiful. You hope we shall overcome. That's beautiful. You you switched camp from Mr. Uh, for Dogway to another trainer. How helpful has that been? It's, it's been really helpful. Um, I mean, they didn't come to change things. They only came to impart more knowledge and also to add on top of what uh, that, that or, or on top of what I knew before. And I'm grateful to them. You know, um, it, they've been really a great game changer. Uh, you know, I'm learning the sports. I'm learning the art of boxing. I'm, I'm enjoying boxing again, you know, so they bring a different tune, different vibes all together, different flavor all together. How's the relationship with Mr. Podobo? He's my father. You are cool? He's my father, of course. I'm good, cool, my father. Yeah, cool. I'm good, cool, my father. I have nothing, you know, I have nothing against my father, so I love my father. Life goes on. Yeah, life goes on. The... Yes, um, I've always likened you to Lionel Messi of Argentina. Okay. He's a gem, but his fan base in Argentina is um, sort of few. Mm. You know what I'm saying, sir? For me, there'll be fights and lips hide the flag of Ghana, but 
sometimes you see people putting in some, some negative stories. Recently we heard, oh, Dubai is no more fighting under the flag of Ghana. How true is that? None of that is true. You know, we've already um, clarified that. I don't know, but hey, listen. They say that there's a saying, and forgive me if I don't um, word it properly, but they say that where, 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 I like that. You know? <laughs> so, with that means I'll leave that. I'll, okay. I'll leave on that note. Okay. okay. So, finally, what do you have for fans of Neho? They'll be looking up to see you at the Kutuka International Airport. I'm sure my colleague journalists will be anxiously waiting, but I've had the exclusive right here in Maryland. <laughs> Despite group of companies, despite media, this man here took me from. So please, as soon as I come to Ghana, I am coming for my check. Okay? Yeah, I am coming for my check. <laughs> Jamba, I asked you to give a message to your fans, not despite me. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, but they are, he took me from. Look, look, look at me. Ajay. Yeah. Ah, Ajay. Ajay, baby. Oh. Oh, I was supposed to be in bed. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, I'm talking, I'm stressing. Uh. Yeah. But listen, it's been great. You guys have been so supportive. I want to encourage you guys to continue to support Isaac Dugbe. Um, You know, we keep on moving forward. I thank God Almighty, you know, for where we are today. I want to say something to you. Right now, yeah, the word has turned into flesh, right? So now there is no more issues, no more problems. Nobody has no hold over me now, and I thank God Almighty because He's always been there for me. He's always protected me, guided me. All I needed to do was just have a little bit of continue to exercise patience. Yeah? You to your breakthrough is gonna come. You know, the breakthrough is gonna come. But at the end of the year, before the year ends, something most definitely is gonna happen. You know, right now we are in position. You know, we are in position again. Listen. Isaac Dugbe. The Royal Storm. The Royal Storm. Don't sleep on me. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was philosophical Isaac Dugbe, the Royal Storm. Uh, it's been wonderful having him. This is Maryland, US of A. Um, he fought Gonzalez in Minnesota. He's flown here to Maryland. Like he said, he's supposed to rest, but we get to have the ex exclusive as despite media. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.